Bezrat Hashem, Chavad Shabbos Kodesh, Chavad Hanukkah, Atfila B'Shem Kol Yisrael. For Pesach, we're opening B'Nai Sefasara, Baruch HaBas Yehudis, Yonah Bas Pasa, Shir Bas Pasa, Toba Bas Peral, and all of Kla Yisrael, Bezrat Hashem. Hashem, please help us pray to you sincerely and wholeheartedly and with perfect faith. Let our prayers be pure, fitting, and properly ordered. Let us pray with complete attention and devotion. Let us bind our thoughts to the words of our prayers as we say them. And let us concentrate on the words intensely and pour our heart to you like water. And this could also mean in our own words, not just through a sitter. Concentrate on our words when we express ourselves to, um, to Hashem. Aid us in expressing ourselves to you at all times. Help us tell you everything that is on our heart. You know how many needs we have. Our hearts are so troubled and that we find it too much to express and explain everything we need and want. Please take pity on our poor soul and help us talk to you about everything we have in our heart. Put pure and pleasing words and entreaties into our mouth so I'll be able to arouse your compassion and bring you to accept our prayers with love. Let our prayers rise up to the greatest heights. Amen, amen. Chaver halacha lemaisa for Hanukkah. So for the entire time that the mitzvah of the Hanukkah lights is being fulfilled through the lights of the menorah, which is half an hour, it is forbidden to benefit from their light. Meaning using the Hanukkah lights for other purposes is disrespectful to the mitzvah. Therefore, it is customary to place next to the Hanukkah lights the shamash candle with which the other candles were lit, so that if one were to use the light of the menorah, he would use the light of the shamash. One must position the shamash slightly higher than the other candles, so that should be clear that it is not included in the number of the Hanukkah candles. All right, so a nice halacha for uh, the Hanukkah candles, benefiting versus not benefiting. So here we go. Shining knowledge. This is a very, very important um, piece of Torah. And it's sort of just like reinforcing what we're learning. So let's fire it up. According to Chassidut and Kabbalah, oil is a symbol of wisdom, of understanding. There is unholy oil and there is holy oil. And this is what we spoke about the other day. Right? What's the difference between being surrounded by holy oil, which which means people containing holy oil within themselves and people who are containing unholy oil. And the difference between the two is that one who is containing unholy oil, you can have a conversation with that person and that conversation, you don't walk away feeling transformed. But someone with holy oil, mamash, that person could change you forever. That one word, that that one piece of advice, that one sentence, that one action, can change the whole world for you. That's someone who's containing the holy oil that we all are coveting. Rav Nachman says in the Kutei Maran, the oil of Hanukkah resembles the Seichel, intelligence, and Chachma, which means wisdom. And after this, you come to the level of humility and true knowledge. And if you want to know if whatever you understand is deep, 
if your oil is holy or unholy, unholy, it's very simple. It's not a complex thing. After you understand it, you feel it. Right? So after learning a piece of information uh, from a Torah or from a, a lecture or a book, what not? So if it contains holy oil, you leave that, that period of time, you leave that experience having that feeling inside, that feeling, that, that, that reawakening, that fire, that desire to do better, to do more, to add on to our lives. And if not, just, uh, just information. Imagine that I studied the Gemara. I'm studying very deep. If I study on a very holy level, I think the Gemara is so good. If I learn the Rambam, which is one of the commentaries, a commentary, and uh, and I understand it, I think that God blessed me to understand the Rambam. The Rambam is so deep, right? Thank you, Hashem, for allowing me to understand the words of the Rambam. And this is so amazing. Like uh, it, it tastes like food when learning it. It's unbelievable. And if I learn on an unholy level, I walk around thinking I'm such a genius. The way I understand this Rambam is just unbelievable. Or you want to tell the whole world, I understand this, I understand that. We're quoting, constantly quoting different different uh, pieces, different rabbayim. And while that's nice and while that's needed, right? It could just be a way of, of showing off knowledge. But is it coming from a holy oil or is it coming from an unholy oil? And this goes for everything in the world, Chavra. Even between people, you get the sweetest conversation with somebody. You walk away and say to yourself, I should really write a book on how to hold a conversation. <laughs> I mean, can you believe the way I'm leading this conversation? Or you want to just by one conversation? Is this unholy or is this holy? Or you can walk away and think, it's so sweet to talk to this person. What a beautiful person. What a great person. It depends where the oil is coming from. Does it come from an unholy place or from the Hanukkah light? Right, the light that's indescribable. Right when when we talk to to people who are mamas changing the world, we're going to places where you know a lot of people don't really go to, right to to affect that place in the world and those people, mamas indescribable, indescribable. And you walk away just what a beautiful person, what a beautiful act. Now oh I should write a book on uh you know on on the conversation how I ask questions or or answer his questions her or hers questions. So does it come from an unholy place or from the Hanukkah light? So Rabbi Nachman says, that is the first thing a person has to know. The oil of Hanukkah is what I'm buying for all year round. Holy oil, holy understanding the deepest steps. If you learn something and you are aware of its steps, you become humble. Right? We spoke about yesterday that when we read information, when we learn information, Right, we could see where it applies to us. And when we speak to people, we, we could find pieces in that conversation that apply to us. And, and it could cause this feeling of distance from, from the creator or, or a feeling of, oh my gosh, I have so much wrong inside of me. I have so many flaws. Rabbi Nachman flips out in his head and he says, no, that's actually a really good feeling. The fact that you're able to detect that, the fact that you're being aware of... Um, of yourself and of others. It's an amazing thing. And it shows that you're yearning and you're desiring to come closer to Hashem. And if you don't feel the depths of it, you become very arrogant. Oh, I'm better than that person. I know the information already. Or you ever come across a person who asks a, who tells a story like, guys, did you hear the story? And then it can go one of two ways or three ways, actually, right? You know the story and you say, oh yeah, I know the story. Then the person feels weird even telling the story. Right, and then he like tentatively says it, but then you're like ah, nodding the head the whole time, or you know the story, but you tell that person, eh, I don't really know it, or you don't know it. You just say you don't know it. <laughs> but what's our problem? What's our problem? The way we understand the Torah, the way we understand God, is from our minds. But our mind is so little and so finite. I could take a child and I explain to my child the highest ideas of the world and make it so simple. And the craziest thing in the world happens through the words. My child can really understand what I mean. All the infiniteness. I can explain to him how God is shining into me, though he cannot fully shine into me in the most infinite way because I am finite. The holiness of Hanukkah is that I can understand that's all about just one little candle. 
It's all about one jug of oil, right? That was the miracle, just one little oil. But it doesn't matter how small it is. If it's holy oil and with one jug, the gates of the depths of the Torah and of life and of our connection open up for me. Gewalt, do we need to hold on to this light forever? So Hebra, Hanukkah is a time where we're trying to return back to that holy oil. We're trying to, to acquire this holy oil for the whole year. And once we, once we taste it, once we see it, once we experience it, we live with it forever. It's eternal light. It's something that we can never forget. That's why Hanukkah and the lights are eternal. It's something that we live with all year round. Right? Zot Hanukkah is the eighth day of Hanukkah. Eight represents above nature. Right? We live in a world of seven, but eight is like higher, mamish, beyond. So Zot Hanukkah, the last day of Hanukkah, is, is a representation of the whole year. Mamish, but maybe Zoha. To understand that the miracles are happening every single second to us. Mamash is being alive, seeing, opening our eyes in the morning. And just seeing the world, seeing ourselves, seeing what we could accomplish. What we could do for the world and for people and for ourselves. Zerat Hashem, Chavar, we should all be Zoha to, to, to taste a little bit of this oil. And to really go out physically and, and buy the oil and uh, be excited about it. Chavar, Zerat Hashem, Kavar Shavuz Kodesh. Anything to add, Isaac? Questions, comments, please feel free. I got none, but thank you for sharing that. You're the best, brother. I, I love you. I almost forgot it was Hanukkah time. Oh, four days until Hanukkah. It's never too late. It's never. No, nah, I mean, I like this. I'll, I'll, I'll share some at my um, lighting. <laughs> Amazing, so good. All right, I love you, brother. You too. Bye.